Hello and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now we have lots in store for you today. We have obviously our, our news articles, very interesting, that we're going to be having with Bianca. We also have a What Would Chrissy Do, which is where you get to ask, maybe you're going through a dilemma of some sort and you want to know what I would do in your situation. And we also have a challenge that we're going to revisit because we've been a bit behind with our challenges lately, but we're going to get back on top of them and we're going to have some new ones for you very, very soon. And also we're going to be speaking speaking to trichologist um, Jane Mayhead, who's going to be telling us all about hair loss and what can be done if you are in this situation as well. So do join us for that later on. But first of all, let's speak to Bianca with the news. Hello, Bianca. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm good, thank uh, you. We had fun today, didn't we? We had the best time, didn't we? <laughs> I didn't expect we, it to be so much fun. Yeah, we, we did a challenge. Well, I did a challenge, but then Bianca, I got her to join in. We <laughs> I did, gate crashed um, it. <laughs> we did some singing lessons with um, CC Sammy, didn't we? Yes. And if you're watching CC and Alexa, thanks so much for today because it was great. Great, wasn't it? It was really good, wasn't it? Was but, you expecting it to be like that, Chris? No, to be honest, I just thought it would just be a few singing lessons, but then we got went to another studio and we did a bit of dancing and singing, yeah. so it was really good. It was fun. really good. Did you feel like you learnt a lot? I did, yeah, time. with the breathing and stuff like that. But to be honest, well, I forgot about the singing afterwards and I was just busy dancing. Just enjoying it. Just enjoying and, myself. And me. I know. We're she in was, the back. She was the backing dancer. Best moves. <laughs> So we'll be playing that very fun. soon on the show. I can't yeah. wait to see it. So the news this week. So the question I'm going to ask you guys and Chrissy: should celebrities be expected to be role models? So a lot of technology like Twitter and Instagram, we're always following them and we can always keep up to date with what they're doing. But should they always have to be on their best behaviour? So journalist Liz Jones wrote an article about Rihanna saying that when I first met Rihanna, the pop princess was seated next to Vogue editor with her hair and ringlets looking like Shirley Temple. Um, the second encounter was during London Fashion Week. This poisonous pop princess should come with a government health warning. And then Rihanna was quick to reply and said, don't be um, amateur with your articles. You sound bitter. Nobody over here acts like they're perfect. I just live my life. And it is um, and role model is not a position or title that I've ever campaigned for. So do you think celebrities should be expected to be role models? Should that go with that position? Should that be automatically attached to it? I think it inevitably is, isn't it? Mm. Because if you are in the public eye and there's always someone following you around with a camera and stuff, you have to take some kind of responsibility for your actions. Yeah. So I think I don't think you can be a celeb and not be expected to be a role, role model yeah. of some sort, because there will always be someone following you, there will always be someone looking up to you in some way, especially young, impressionable mm -hmm. kids. Exactly. So you can't just, I don't think you can just go and do whatever you want. It's different if you're, um, you know, if you're not known by the public, yeah. you can, can do what you want and you can, you know, it doesn't matter. And there's not really going to be any consequences to anyone else apart from yourself. That's your choice. Yeah. But when I think you're in the public eye and, and people are looking up to you, then I think you do have to take some kind of responsibility. You have to watch what you do. That's true. And with, you know, with every job that you have, you have, there are certain rules that you have to stick by, isn't yeah. it? So celebrities, being a celebrity is a job in a way. If you're a singer or you're an actress, you're doing a job. So you're going to be, and fair enough, it is 24 seven. Jobs aren't 24 seven all the time, but they, you know, you should be expected to sort of take on that role and mm. act appropriately. Because like, if you were um, a nurse or something like that, you wouldn't walk around, you know, with like, half half like naked or with different clothes on and stuff like that, like sort of like Rihanna does. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't do that. Obviously, it's a completely different job role, but the same sort of, I think, principles apply in, in that yeah. you should, you know, you're working with people or you're working with, in Rihanna's case, young teenagers who but are looking up But even with other, other jobs as well, I mean, I think employers will still look at your Facebook page because at the end That's of the true, day, actually. even if you're outside of your working hours, yeah. you're still representing that company because mm -hmm. you work for them in some way. So you, you still, even whatever job you're doing, I think you need to be sort of, responsible what what you do outside of working hours as well yeah it's very true actually. and what you're p posting on facebook and twitter i think it's important yeah and people I wonder what our viewers think as well should we give the number to the viewers if yes. you want to if you want to give us a call as well with your views do give us a call on 6386 six three double zero you can also tweet chrissybshow.tv so we're going to be discussing a few articles tonight yeah. so do feel free to give us a call and give us your opinion yes what, what else and we and um, we also had a comment from one of our viewers on that subject as well um may says rihanna is a bad role model for little girls and it's up to parents not rihanna to point this out so that's interesting mm. and also holly says yes rihanna you are a role model unfortunately you get your money and fame from it and you know it <laughs> that's quite true as well, isn't it? Anyone on Rihanna's side at all? I don't think there are any on Rihanna's <laughs> side, unfortunately, on that. Oh. 
Yeah, okay, so you can call us as well if you've got um, comments on that. So also, something I read this week and I thought it was really, it really grabbed me actually. So do you always take off your makeup before bed? I personally do, unless, you know, it's a really late night and on the odd occasion I, I won't, but like that is like maybe once a year or something. It's very unusual for me mm. not to take, because I do, because the thing with me is that when I, it affects my sleep. If I sleep and I wake up, my eyes are like quite puffy and I make yeah. a mascara. So it's comfort for me. I feel comfortable when it's all off and I've got a fresh yeah, me face. Too. Yeah. So you know, it's nothing else other than the comfort. But so a recent survey revealed that a third of us sleep with our makeup on twice a week, Chris. God. There's some, I think there's it's some people that do it more than that. <laughs> to be honest, until a sort of couple of years ago, I did a, like a sort of mini makeup course and they were talking about how bad it is for your skin. I hadn't realised this yeah. before. But to be honest, before the show, I never used to put that as much makeup yeah. on as I do now. That's true. So I did used to kind of go to bed with like my mascara on and like eyeshadow, especially if I was tired. But once I did that course, I thought, oh my gosh, I cannot do that anymore. What did they and say the effects of that? Well? It really ages your skin. Yeah. And um, so since then, I've, I, no matter how tired I am, I've got a face wash, I wash my face, That's and I take, make sure I take my makeup off. Yeah. It's, it, I can't go to sleep with makeup on. The same as I can't go to sleep without brushing my teeth. Yeah, that's I just the same as me. I feel yucky. Yeah. So you need to sort of get showered, get clean yeah, before you nice go to, to bed. Yeah, it's nice to get fresh before yeah. bed, isn't it? Yeah. Some people just don't do that. So a lady named Anna did an experiment to see the effects of makeup. So she, what she did was she kept applying makeup for a whole month and never took it off. And she kept putting, she said it got harder throughout the month to try and apply mascara to already oh, thick, like clot, clots yeah. of mascara on her <laughs> eyelashes. And um, after a while, she, I think it was a few weeks in, she um, she got like a bit of an eye infection from the, some, I think there was some mascara that went in her, in her eye and it was in yeah. there for quite a few days because she kept sleeping with it. Um, so she stopped, I think, for well, a day or two. she just kept two. topping up her makeup every day. She kept day. topping it up every mm. single day and just kept clotting it. And then she'd, she put a little bit of water on it every morning in the shower, but didn't wash it off. Off, just sort of like pat, just washed it a little bit, just put a little bit of water on it, but she kept topping up every single day. And um, by the end of it, experts said that her skin had aged by 10 years, oh a whole gosh. decade. It's unbelievable, That's isn't terrible. it? Ladies and gents, because there are gentlemen that wear makeup nowadays yes, as well. Gents Please as do well. take your makeup off before bed. Yes, hopefully that's a lesson to you. That's a huge lesson to me. Even though I was always taking my makeup off, that has made me want to do it even more yeah. now. And also, I think you've got to sort of cleanse. If you've got cleanser and toner, that's even better. Or if you've got like face wash. Oh, I just use face wipes, actually. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they take it all off. Though. If, I'm, no, if I haven't right, got much, if it's, a, if it's a show that I don't have... Um a day so that I don't have a show, I don't put as much on obviously, and then I just might just use the, the face wipes, but if it's a show day, definitely, I've got a really good um, face wash that I use, yeah. it just takes everything what, off. Like a, is it like a scrub? No, no, I can't say what it is on TV, can I, but it's a really, I'll tell you later. You tell me it's later. A, it's a really, really good one. <laughs> and then I've got, I've got the eye makeup remover that I take off the rest of the stuff, so yeah. it's very, it's very quick. It's worth it as well, with that study, do you want to age 10 years, or do you want to take the makeup <laughs> off every night and know what I'm going to go for? <laughs> Um, yeah. My next question for you guys at home is, can money buy happiness? So recently, George Travos won um, £1.16 million pounds on two lotto wins, um, but he says that he's still not happy with winning twice. So that's an unusual sort of response for someone who's won the lottery. So well, what did he want? He's coming across very ungrateful, isn't he? <laughs> and um, basically, what happened was that he missed out on um, winning 12 million by one number. So he was sort of thinking about that rather than the 1.16 million he just won, he thought about the idea that he could have got more. So sort of greed was making him feel that way. So that, that's the problem sometimes when people do gamble and they yeah. do play the lottery because there's always that, oh, what if, what if I'd done put yeah, these numbers, if, I should have it. done that. And then you're always re living like with regrets. Yeah. So just don't, don't, don't do it in the first place. No. Just Because now he's in a dilemma, now he's miserable. He's got all that money and he's still exactly. playing. And, he, and also it said, uh, the report said that it took him two months to realise that he first won the lottery because um, he had he, he just had his lottery tickets hanging around and never really checked them. And um, even now he says that he, he could be, he could possibly be winning more. He's got more lottery tickets that he hasn't checked. It's sort of like a contradiction though because he wants to win more but then he hasn't checked yeah. some in his like... I don't know, his glove compartment like in his car, I don't know. This bad, isn't it? Yeah. So he was unhappy with that win. I just think that's just unbelievable. You have to think about the positive. You just won 1.16 yeah. million. <laughs> it makes you think that he just doesn't deserve it. You know, there's plenty of other people, people who'd be over the moon with that type of but money. But it's, you know, it's, it's the way some people look at things. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. There are people that, actually I sent out a newsletter today about that, that there's people that 
no matter what they have, mm. they're still looking at the things that they don't have. And I think it's great to be ambitious and to, you know, to go for your that's goals it, and everything. Yeah. But you have to appreciate what you have as well. Be mm. grateful for the things that you do have. So that's people around you, your family, your friends. You know, there's some people that complain that, for example, they, they don't have a, a boyfriend, for example. But then when they get a boyfriend, they're complaining about, oh, he does this, he does yeah. that. So it's like they're never happy. Yeah. And if you, if you are that type of person, you, you're just going to... Be unhappy it's always all the time. gonna drag yeah, you down, horrible. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But we have to go to a quick break. We're gonna stay with yes, us, aren't you, Bianca? Because yeah. we've got a video to show you after this. So do join us and if you do want to give us a call, 020 7686 6300. Welcome back to the show. Now let's revisit one of the first ever challenges that I did on this show. Welcome everyone to the Challenge Chrissy segment on the Chrissy B Show. So this is where you guys at home get to choose a challenge for me every week. And this week it's scuba diving. How are you Motti? Very excited. <laughs> now, now I think you're, you're quite an adventurous person aren't you? I am. I'm very adventurous. I call myself an adrenaline junkie. I love doing all these uh, scary stuff, things that get your ad adrenaline pumping. If you're part of the Chrissy B family, we're, we're going to choose someone every week that's going to come along with me from our lovely viewers. So if you're not part of the Chrissy B family you want to be, you can just go on the website chrissybshow.tv and register there for a chance to win one of these exciting trips. All right, so I'm looking forward to it. Are you, Motti? Oh, I can't wait. I'm so sorry. let's go. I'm here with Steve of London Scuba and he's one of the diving instructors here. So he's going to be telling us a bit about what a person can expect when they come here. So thanks for inviting us, Steve. Yeah, you're most welcome. Nice to have you. Um, so yeah, the Discover Scuba Diving Session, it's basically a two-hour program. It's purely introductory, so it's designed to get people swimming around in the water, hopefully having as much fun as possible. Um, it's getting you used to the new environment, kind of the sensation of the bubbles going up the side of your face, but making sure you're nice and relaxed at the same time. At the end of it, hopefully you'll go away having enjoyed the session and want to come back and do it again. Well, that's the plan anyway. We're very unique in that we're one of only a handful of dive centres in the whole of England with our own purpose-built facilities. Um, we run lots of UK dive trips as well, so um, we go down to the south coast on weekends or go over to the Farne Islands, dive for the seals in Cornwall. We run Red Sea holidays as well, so we go out to Egypt. Um, we've sent three trips out this year already. Um, one just came back on Saturday. Everyone has an absolutely amazing time. Some of the best in the world. OK, so I can't wait to get started, Steve. Shall we go? Let's do it.
So we've just uh, completed our first scuba diving lesson within the lovely hands of Steve here. It was really a lot of fun. He, he was great. I, I have to admit, I was a little bit scared at the beginning because it's you have to kind of get used to breathing underwater. And I was, I kept thinking that I wasn't actually breathing when I was because I would have been under the water. That I got it all wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I want to go into the into the open water. Wait yeah. for Chrissy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And just to let you, you guys know, I was meant to be doing my skydive tomorrow, but due to the adverse weather conditions, I can't do it this year anymore. That was the last one. Mm, Chris. So, yeah, I'm very I'm sorry so looking forward that. to seeing that as I well. I really psyched myself up for that. I was ready for it. Yeah. And then these silly winds now that we've got outside. <laughs> silly it's weather. Outside. The silly wind that we've got. Yeah, now I can't do it, but hopefully springtime. Yeah, well, next next year now. Yeah, I have to wait till next year when the weather's better. You'll have to sort of forget about it and then psych yourself up next year, closer to the time. I did have a nightmare. <laughs> did you? I had a nightmare about it the other night, yeah. Really, Chris? My heart was out here. <laughs> doom, doom, doom. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I'll, I'll share that with you another time. Yeah. Do you have some more news? We do, Chris. So my Tell next me. question is, should you always listen to your friends? So almost one in four men who have divorced or split up with a partner admitted that their decision was swayed by friends who had also done the same thing. And then mm. that was one in seven women, so less women, but there's still one in seven, were also influenced by newly single friends. So do you think that you should always listen to your friends? Are they always right? Do they always have your best interest at heart as well? I don't, th I don't think your friends are the best people to go to when you have mm. relationship issues. Mm. I think you should go to someone completely neutral because obviously your friends care about you and then if you're going to them and say, oh, he did this to yeah. me, he did that to me and I'm so... Up. And they, they get quite... If they're good friends, Very. that is, you know. If they're, if they're those bad friends that just want to see you single and unhappy, mm. you know, and they're trying to break your relationship up, that's different. But it, some genuine friends, because they care about you so much and they think that this person's really treating you badly, then they are going to kind of sway you the other way to say That's look true. just you don't need him or you don't need her just leave them but i think when you are having relationship problems i think you need to go to someone that can really help you like yeah. a counselor or something like that it someone doesn't like really that. know that doesn't know the and they, they can be very objective yeah they can talk to both of you yeah and try and sort things out they're that not about emotionally friends. involved yeah exactly mm. I, don't, I think friends, okay, obviously you're going to speak to them to some extent, but first I think you obviously yeah. need to sort things out with your partner, speak to your partner first. Yeah. If it's not working out, go and get some counselling, mm. definitely. I think it can cause huge problems as well, because I've had like friends in the past where I, I would never get involved in someone else's relationship. I don't even mm. comment really when my friends, unless it's a, like a big enough, if it's a massive thing and it's a big, and it, I need to sort of get involved if it gets like, say it got abusive or something yeah, where you, yeah. it was taken to the next level, then you would get involved, but to protect them. But if it's sort of bickering and little arguments over this and that, it's best, I, I would say that it's best not to get involved mm -hmm. because one minute they're the sort of the partner the couple are not together and then next next week they're probably back together again so it makes and then you, you maybe then said something involved. really bad yeah. about them and then it's just really <laughs> then you're all involved and you've said yeah. big bad things about the partner and then you're the one that looks embarrassed because mm -hmm. you've got to see them next so it's like you're sort of entwined in their relationship and right. you shouldn't really get involved and, and also it's just frustrating as well for you because mm -hmm. if you're telling your friend something and that he's really bad for you and you're always it's just using a lot of your energy and frustration because they're not going to listen to you. At the end of the day, your friend's always going to do yeah. what they think. Yeah. And it might not be what you want to do. You're not in control. Of, you're not even involved in the relationship. Mm -hmm. so I think it's much better to just keep neutral about it. I've, I've got friends who have, everyone has relationship issues. I've got friends who have had relationship issues in the past. And I've just kept neutral. I've always been like a listening ear rather than saying, do yeah. this, split up with him, do that, do this. It's better to but just... Unfortunately, there's a lot of friends that will just, that was the first thing they'll say, split up, yeah. so just divorce. It's unfair on the You'll person. You'll never be happy in love and all these kind of things. Yeah. Just because they haven't made a success of their relationship, they try to sort of make other people do the same. Yeah, and, yeah, really and there is, help. like what we were talking about on Wednesday, actually, like toxic people. There are might be a, a frenemy that is yeah. your friend but is also an enemy, and um, they might not have your best interest at heart, mm. so they might actually be slightly jealous of your relationship you never know yeah, so it's just it's better true. to speak to someone who's not actually involved exactly and keep it that way and then, then there's no like negative vibes as well with anything because mm. you know if you have big eyes with your boyfriend or girlfriend then and you know then you've actually swept it under the carpet and you've turned over a new leaf the friend that's really involved is always going to think about the negatives you know so if you invite them true. over for dinner or whatever an occasion they're always going to sort of be thinking about that, your i would say don't say anything about your partner unless it's a good thing mm. 
something. No. This is something good about yeah. them. You and should never be exactly. bad-mouthing your husband, your wife, your, yeah. your boyfriend, girlfriend to anyone. Because why should you be with them if you've got nothing yeah. but negative things mm-hmm. to say? And why exactly. should your friend want you to be with them? So I yeah. think definitely, and I wouldn't, and also that statistic there, I wouldn't like get, listen to a friend and let, let them be the reason why I've got divorced or broken up with a partner. Mm. Do you know what I mean, Chris? Yeah. If you want to break up with someone, then do it for you, not do it for someone, your friend that's telling you to do you that. To. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I was just quite shocked. One, one in four men apparently listen to friends and stuff. I thought I thought it would have been the women, really, but yeah, the women because they get all chatty and everything, yeah. don't they? I think men th- men tend to not. Well, some men, a lot of men tend not to kind of express what they're feeling to yeah. people, do they? They kind mm. of t- tend to internalise things more. Yeah. So it's quite it's quite surprising. I think with I think I don't know what age that range was, but I think maybe for young men, young younger adults they might feel that the single life might be for them so that, that might be a reason they might see their friends going off and having a good time and going on all these holidays and stuff and be, being independent on their own and they might mm. see that and think oh I want to be free and single at a young age they might think that so I'm, I'm mm. not sure what age range that was but it did yeah. shock me um so you can call us as well if you've got an opinion on wisely. that yeah exactly Chris right. Okay, and I think we've got t- we've got time for we've got about one minute, Bianca. We can so a quick whisk one. through one more. Yes. So new studies show that one million five year olds have been given mobile phones, and health campaigners warn parents of actual serious risks as well of this. So do you think that parents and guardians should stop their children who are that young having a mobile phones? Do you think they need a mobile phone at that age? I d- See, I don't think they need it. Obviously, they're putting themselves in danger because people that see them with the phone mm, will probably try true. and rob them and stuff, things yeah, like true. that as well. But I can understand why some parents would want that because schools aren't what they used to be, are they? Mm. And, like, I'm not putting any schools up. I'm talking about sort of the way crime is and the way kids seem to be growing up a lot faster. There's, sometimes mm. there's trouble even in, you know, in secondary schools That's and uh, what the, yeah. the primary schools. So mm. it's, I can understand, like, parent, worried parents wanting their kids to maybe have a phone for emergencies mm. because kids they're, they're so they're so quick to learn things aren't they yeah. so it's nothing for them to use it or if they need their mum quickly they've, they've got the phone so I can understand but yeah. I, obviously I do think it's but they're way quick, too they might they might lose it as well and if it's a value you yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't I'm hoping that they're not giving them valuable phones like iPhones and stuff well, they, well, hopefully not if they well, did, if that's, they, that's they, ridiculous if yeah, they are maybe if they're just one that it. just dolls out <laughs> <laughs> Bianca, we're going to stay with us because after yes. the break, we're going to be talking all about hair care because we have Jane Mayhead coming to join us, consultant trichologist, and she's going to be talking about hair loss and what you can do to minimise this and to give us some great advice. So do join us after this. Welcome back. Now we're going to speak all about hair because I have someone here with me, Jane Mayhead, who's going to be telling us about hair loss. Good Hello. evening, Jane. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. So just can you just explain to the viewers what actually is a trichologist exactly? Well, somebody who deals with all problems relating to the hair and scalp. So any hair loss, any scalp problems, that's what we deal with. Right. Okay. How did you get into that? Started as a hairdresser, okay. but found that I wanted a little bit more out of it. Found mm. that I had a good rapport with clients that had problems. So that's, that's what I did. Okay. All right. So what, what is the main reason why uh, people lose their hair in the first place? It depends. For men, it's a genetic problem. For women, it's age dependent. So it really very much depends on younger women tend to shed hair quite, quite often. Older women, it's more of a thinning problem. So those yeah. are the two most common that you see in women. Mm-hmm. As many as one in four women will suffer from shedding at some point in their life, but they all have various causes. Mm-hmm. So it's very difficult with women to be specific. So you have to look at each individual cause. It can be mm-hmm. dieting, hormonal, that kind of thing. Okay. Age-related thinning is a little bit different because you have a thinning in the front, so it's a little bit easier to diagnose because mm-hmm. it's a bit more straightforward. It's in a pattern and therefore yeah. you can tell. But the shedding part of it, it's a little bit more difficult to determine the cause behind it. And mm. age related, if it's a younger woman, hormones are quite often the cause. If you've had a baby, that's quite a common one for shedding. Yeah. Is there anything that you can actually do to prevent the shedding or the hair loss beforehand? Well, it depends on, on the cause. If you've been on a diet, then quite often some women will, will experience some form of hair shedding. Is that one of those after. crazy diets, though, where they're not having sort of... Generally, right if you're restricting and... too many things, then mm-hmm. it, it can cause... And it, if it's rapid weight loss as well, if you have too much too soon, 
then that can oh. trigger a, a bowel shedding. So that's another great reason not to go on these crazy crash diets because they're not good for you, you can lose your hair as well. Okay. One, of, one of the most common causes is low iron. And women mm. particularly get that a lot, mainly because of the cycle every month and yeah. you know having children, that kind of thing. So the iron does dip down quite a lot and then it's hard really to regain the stores and they find mm. themselves shedding hair. But it, it never leads to a complete hair loss. So with the shedding, it's you know more of a, you lose a little bit of it. It might be an increase in the amount when you wash, but it doesn't yeah. all fall out. So, you know, it's a recoverable problem. Because my, my sister, I remember when she was a teenager, all of a sudden, she, her hair just started to really, really, she had this really nice thick hair. And then it just started to really thin. And we didn't know, which, obviously she got really depressed about it. Mm -hmm. because she was going from having really nice, thick, long, curly hair. And then just suddenly you could see, see her scalp. Mm -hmm. And like it, we were sort of running all over the place trying to help her, and I think she, she someone prescribed minoxidil to her and mm -hmm. things like that. But it's it's only recently now that she's in her forties that mm -hmm. her hair actually seems to be getting thicker again. But mm -hmm. she went through quite a, a, a while where it was very thin. Yeah, I mean, it, it's different if you're shedding hair, it usually is a short-lived thing, it'll last for a few months and, and it'll just be a small amount. You might yeah. think, be alarmed by the lot that you see in the wash, mm -hmm. but generally it doesn't lead to anything significant. But if you're noticing that you can see more of your scalp at the front, then that yeah. might be a different problem altogether. Okay. And it could be hormonally related or it could be the start of, of female thinning. So yeah. there are things like the minoxidil that you can use mm. to try and stave that off a little bit. But with the shedding, it's much more easier to deal with because it's not such it doesn't have that impact you don't really lose a significant amount so it's something that can be dealt with through you know just mm. looking at what might be causing it could be medication could be hormones could be yeah. diet related there are lots of different things but they're easily remedied but the higher one is the the, the iron and that's okay. quite a common is there anything one. that you can do naturally to to help sort of hair maybe grow back if, it, if it's been it, thinning? Again, it, if it it, the, it's only going to help if your cause is something related to, you know, nutritional deficiencies. Mm. If it's not nutrition, then that's not really going to make an awful lot of difference. But yeah. if you have been on a diet, then obviously you can put back the nutrients that you may have lost when you were cutting out all those foods. So okay. a good healthy eating is a good, is a good start and also yeah. looking after the hair because some hair falls out because you're not looking after it as well. Okay. And stress. And stress. Okay, yeah, well, stress is a big thing, isn't it? For yeah. lots of people. Yeah. Okay, now we had some pictures as well that, that you brought along for us that you were, you were going to talk. Can we see the first one, please? Oh, what's this is here? hair uh, damaged through traction. So um, any hair that you that you mm -hmm. put on, false hair that or might pull, or any irons or things like that, this is caused by a weave, and it's just oh. too many years of, of gentle pulling on the hair, and it's just caused some. Can you thinning. just point your hair up in a ponytail, or something like that? Like if you if it's put tight, your, yeah, really? you you can oh get these gosh. sort of ponytail areas where mm -hmm. it does have traction, but traction can be caused by extensions and anything that pulls on the hair tightly for a okay. long period of time, anything painful, and that will cause some traction damage. Okay. Let's take a look at the next one. Again, so the that's again. the traction damage from extension use at the sides. Gosh. So it just pulls it and causes it to... See us yeah. ladies, we try to make things look better and then <laughs> they look better and then that's what happens. And we saw that third one, let's take a look at that one. That's uh, scarring, so you can get diseases of the skin which can be mm. quite difficult to deal with. Um, and you know, this one's an extensive scarring from mm. a lupus. And uh, these conditions they, they can't be treated, you can control them, but generally they cause permanent hair loss oh and they can be quite devastating for people. These don't occur in, in the shedding that you'd see, so you wouldn't see lots of hair coming out in the wash yeah. or brushing. These are gradual problems that start mm. very small and they just escalate over a long period of time. Okay. So that condition had, had been there for quite some time. Wow. Um, so that has to be dealt with by sort of covering up makeup, that kind of thing. Okay. So you do have to be careful what you put on the skin as well. Okay. Now you brought two lovely guests with you this evening. Did, yeah. <laughs> what are their names? Uh, anything you like. Okay. Should we have Chrissy? <laughs> so Chrissy and Bianca <laughs> over here. Okay, so so obviously if someone has, does have permanent hair loss, this is an alternative they could they could think of. Yeah, these these uh, products they clip in, so they have this kind of clipping attachment right. so you don't have the same traction problems mm -hmm. so if you have suffered with some form of traction around the front or the sides and you want to use a hair piece then yeah. you can use these because they clip in and they don't have that same pulling effect okay. you can take them out at night as well so they're not in 24 hours a day mm -hmm. which some of those are and also with the scarring that you saw as well I wonder if you guys can see 
they so they're easy clips. to put in and can out. Can we get a close up? Okay, while well, they're getting a close up, yeah, you can carry on talking. <laughs> that one's made from real hair and it's like a mm -hmm. parting enhancer, so you can just clip it into the top by the parting. Yeah. And you can have that styled and trimmed into okay. so to your own clips hair. clips here that they don't damage the hair. There you go. So there's no pulling with these ones. Okay. And is that the same with these two they're here the, as well? Yeah, but they're, they're slightly larger, each uh, mm -hmm. uh, the slightly larger piece, so depending on how much coverage you want and how much yeah. hair you've got. Because if you've got um, a patch, like that lady in the picture, but you've got a lot of hair at the back, you mm -hmm. might just want something to cover that patch. Yeah. Or you might have quite a bit of thinning. And the clips will, will clip onto what hair you've got. So if you've got quite an extensive area, you need to find a point at which you can clip those mm. in so that they hold properly. What, what's the worst case you've seen or some of the worst things that you've seen? Well, no hair at all. Mm. Um, the scarring ones are the worst ones because, you know, there isn't anything you can do. So mm. covering with a wig is really the only answer. Mm. Um, and of course, sometimes if you've, if you've got hair still here at the back, you want to hold as much of your own hair as possible. So the partial pieces are, are quite good yeah. and they're quite light. If you've got a big, heavy wig, sometimes mm. that puts people off wearing them. So they'd rather wear a scarf. But when you've got a partial, then yeah. they're a bit lighter. And it is it's devastating, I think, especially for the ladies, because our hair is very important to us. And like, mm. if, if it's not looking the best, if we're just having a bad hair day, it kind of puts a dampener on things, doesn't it? So I can understand how it can make someone lose their confidence as well. But again, there's always an alternative. You can use hair pieces, you can do different yeah. things. So it's not like you don't sort of allow this to make you lose your confidence completely, because there are things that you can do and you yeah. should see someone about it. There are sprays, there are lots of different things that add fire to the hair so if you if you don't want to wear a hair piece you can spray things in that thickens mm. it up it's quite and they're inexpensive are they good though, though those things Cause I saw it on yeah. TV once advertised and I was thinking for, for someone that I knew certain but. good sprays work well they do work well and they they are good for some people and especially for women sometimes when you've got thinning hair and they dye their hair dark brown and they've got a little bit of regrowth and you've got that yeah. sort of it it makes it look even thinner so these are colored so if you spray it in and it gives you that sort of extra so you just wash it out at the end of the day do yeah. you yeah Okay, yeah. so just oh, okay. Do you, have any, do you have any questions, Bianca, about hair? Hello. Um, about thickening, like what what can you do if you need like the extra? Like, what would you do if you you maybe you've bought a hair piece that's thick on top, but you've got thin hair like hair underneath? What could you? How could you blend it, or what would you say rec recommend for hair like that? We well, can use the, the fibre spray to boost it up yeah. as well. But there are some good products on the market, shampoos and conditioners that that will thicken them up. But you, mm -hmm. if you have a piece, you usually have it sort of styled and fitted to mm -hmm. your thickness as well and these can be trimmed in too yeah. and the real hair ones can be cut and styled to your own but okay. usually with these they're matched in to your thickness your color and everything so yeah. you wouldn't really notice a difference but if you've got thin hair would you recommend using the piece like that or would that not wouldn't damage the hair at all but if it's very thin and you're adding say the clipping no i mean extensions don't really work for thin hair because mm. your th the hair is mostly thin at the top yeah and you can't have extensions mm. there so because you, you know, can see it and there's nothing to cover it yeah mm. so you'd have to have something on the top anyway extensions give length not volume so you'd need something like that on the top yeah. Mm -hmm. But you, I mean, if you did have a piece on the top and you still weren't satisfied yeah. with the volume, extensions could be put in, but you have to have the right sort of hair to take the extensions, mm -hmm. otherwise the thinning can accelerate. Okay. And mm. just before you go, Jane, if someone needs to see a true college, do they have to go to their GP first or they can come straight to... It's not like on you. the NHS, but a lot of GPs can help you in that direction. Right, okay. But I belong to the Institute of Trichologists and that's really the best place to go. They're well right, renowned. Okay. All right, that's lovely. Thank you so much for your You're advice. Welcome. Thank you. So we're going to go to a quick break and then continue with our news topics with Bianca. So do join us after this. Welcome back to the show. Now, we do have a call on the line. I think we had a, a few more that unfortunately hung up. So sorry to have kept you waiting, but if you want to call back, please do. But let's talk to our first caller. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Hello. How are you? Hi. I'm good, thank you. Um, my name's Rachel and I'm from East London. Hi, Rachel. So what did you uh, have to say today? I was just listening to the topic about can money buy you happiness? Mm -hmm. And I don't think it can. I think that Sometimes when you have so much bills and like problems with life can really get you down, you think that money can sort of solve everything. But mm -hmm. I don't think it's easy or the um, equation is simple as money equals happiness. I think it's um, so much more than that. I think that like, your friends and your family and yeah. everything make you yeah. happy. But 
money can make you happier, but I don't think it equals happiness. <laughs> yeah, because obviously, if you, don't, if you don't have it, you'll be miserable at the same time because yeah. you do need yeah. money to survive and pay your bills and stuff, so you don't yeah. have all that stress, but Go as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> If yeah, you do need yeah, you do. and the money. Yeah, because then, especially I think people that win the lottery, they're, they're sometimes in a worse position because they didn't yeah. earn that money yeah. and they didn't get it over time. That's true. They got it quickly yeah. and then they usually tend to lose it quite fast as well. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, thanks so much for your call. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 <laughs> okay, yeah, I definitely agree with Rachel. Well, right, let's go to uh, what would Chrissy do? This is a, um, someone in a bit of a dilemma. Uh, this person says, hi Chrissy, my brother has been taking heroin for years. My grandmother keeps asking how he is and if he has stopped. I don't want to lie to her, but I cannot tell her the truth and my brother will not call her. What would Chrissy do? Now, I think this is a, a really tricky situation, first of all, and I don't think it's fair that you've actually been put in this position. Mm. Um, now, if it was my grandmother, I probably wouldn't want to tell her because I wouldn't want to worry her. So... I would probably say to my grand, gran, it's not for me to say, it's better that you speak to him yourself. She'll probably gauge from that anyway that maybe he still is, but at least it's not you that's actually told her. And to be honest, sometimes I think with like the elderly, we kind of tend to be a bit overprotective over mm -hmm. them because they are adults at the end of the day. And sometimes they do want to, to know things. So I, I personally, I wouldn't tell my grandpa. What I would do is advise her, Gran, you know, speak to him if you want to know. And I would even, you know, if, if for example, she didn't have his number, I would give the number. So he has, he needs to speak to her. I don't think it's, it's something that you should do. And it's not fair that you're in that position. So that's what I would do. And obviously also try and get some help for your brother to talk to organisations that can help, that can give family members advice on how to deal with someone that has an addiction like this as well. So you can help him as best you can too. All right, and if you have a dilemma that you're in as well, please do send an email to chris at chrissybisha.tv. What would you do? Would you tell your gran? I think, like you said, Chris, I think it's better to for them to go and do it. And also, mm. it is true that with grandparents, you do sometimes feel a bit over, like protective towards them. You don't want to... Yeah. Like, if I had an, like, an issue, I'd probably go to my parents first and my grand... Because I wouldn't want to worry them, even yeah. if my parents weren't but there. But the truth is, at whatever age you are, you're going to be worried about your children, your grandchildren. That's true. But it's like sometimes yeah. you think, oh, God, they're going to have a heart attack if... If, yeah. you know, if, if they find out something, but they're adults at the end of the day, but I just don't That's think it. it's and for her yeah. to And sometimes to you will be surprised at the way that they handle it so well. You know, yeah, sometimes like, when I've had issues, if I've gone to my parents or my grandparents, sometimes I'm worrying about it for weeks and I don't want to worry them about it by saying the issue. Uh, but they like, and then but when I do tell them, it's like a huge pressure, like a yeah, weight's and been lifted. Yeah, and they're older and wiser and they've lived through yeah. things and they can give you so advice Sometimes well. it turns out for the better. Yeah. It's, sometimes it's better than what you think it's going to be. So, yeah. you know, but I do think it's not your like it's not your place to get involved in it and I think it's down to the person to speak to the yeah and I think it's a bit naughty issue. of the brother not to call yeah. the grand because obviously he probably doesn't want to he knows that she's going to ask yeah and that's why he's avoiding to call her but and you, it's you not know, fair her feeling like away. she yeah. has to be involved right. in it yeah. yeah but please do get some help for your brother yes okay you got some more news You've I have yes so my next question is are men scared of smart women so a 41-year-old... I think we need a whole show to do this on Bianca. <laughs> I think we do. Yeah. So um, a 41-year-old lady from New York called Christine had completed 11 marathons, runs her own consulting firm and is working on her PhD. She's also single. Christine says, I recently had a male friend tell me men just want a woman who's going to be at home and be a great wife and mother. He said to her, you're too intense, you're going like 100 miles an hour all the time and no guy wants that. Christine says, well, I'm attractive, I'm in good shape, fun, great sense of humour, smart and ambitious. Go on, Christine. <laughs> um, you would think that these qualities would um, appeal to men, and but most of them say they, they do, but sooner or later they, she feels that they begin feeling inferior or inadequate as um, um, a man or a breadwinner. So do you think that men are scared of smart women? Do you think it puts them off? I think probably some men are, but we can't obviously paint everyone with the yeah, same everyone, brush. It yeah. depends because if, if you are, I think being that kind of person, that, that kind of woman that's very ambitious and stuff, I think you have to be careful who you, who mm. you go out with because without realising, without wanting to, you could make someone else feel inferior, you could make your partner feel inferior if they're not, for example, at the same level, I would say, or yeah. doing the same things that you are. Especially, for example, if you've got like, this great job and then you're, you're together with someone that's that's been unemployed for years, of course they're going to feel bad because they're not going to be able to pay for things and, you know, go, go, 
part, you know, go 50 50 on mm. things as well. So they're going to feel bad about it. So I think it's something that you have to bear in mind. But I think if you are with a guy that's equally as ambitious and energetic yeah, and true. doing lots of things, it could be great. Mm. So I don't think all men are intimidated no. by it. It depends who it does, they are. It does depend. Quite... Yeah, it definitely depends on the level. And yeah. also it all goes around the subject of like being compatible towards yeah. that person. So yeah. you do, you should go for someone who's sort of on the similar stage of smartness, you might say, call it. Mm. And as you know, so you're going to have more in common. You wouldn't want to, yeah. I don't think someone that's not very intelligent would go for someone who's extremely intelligent because it wouldn't really work. Not to say that it would, not to say that it would never work, but the thing is, if, if you're the kind of person that's always going on about your achievements and yeah. like in front of your partner, that's Makes maybe not achieved bad. as much in people's eyes. That if you keep going on and on about it, obviously it's going to make them feel bad. So it mm. depends. It has to, it's something that could be quite tricky in relationships, yeah. I think. And I think that busy people, if you're always busy and your partner and you haven't got much time for your partner, then that can be a problem in itself, can't it? Yeah. So it's yeah. so maybe not all about this, the smartness or that level of it, but it could be that you just you work all the time and you don't have time. So that could be something that's an issue for the relationship, not mm. so much um, the level of intelligence as yeah. well, isn't it? I just think men are a bit scared of smart women then. It's a tricky one, Chris. <laughs> it's, a, it's a difficult one to say yes or well, no. We've got two men in the studio, maybe we should ask them. Hands up. Scared of smart women? Never. Never? Right, we've got one very confident man very over strong. there. Never. Okay, how about a cameraman really over here? <laughs> oh, good. That's a good answer. <laughs> good answer. No? Oh, look, they're all like macho. No, no way. We're not scared of smart women. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be, I don't think it should put people off. It should be nice. It should if be a man's confident, thing. he won't be intimidated. Yeah, it should be a positive if he, thing. If he doesn't feel confident about himself for whatever reason, he yeah. would, probably would. And I've got some responses from our viewers as well on this one. So, um, Ali said, men appreciate a smart woman. Um, what they don't appreciate is a woman not letting a man be a man. Just because yeah, you know a um, of a better way to fix it or do something, you should keep it to yourself. Let him be right while you um, be silently smart. <laughs> I think that's a really good point. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you're the kind of woman that's always sort of doing everything, yeah. like, no, 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 it's fine. Yeah. I know how to do it myself. But sometimes men do like to kind of take the lead and it's, it's just them being a man. That's so true. if it's true, you might be able to fix the, the, the yeah. shelf or something, but let him do it. He's going to feel yeah. like, yeah, I fixed the shelf. That's I it. Stuff. And what's it to <laughs> He's you going to feel like if he does okay. do it, you know? Yeah, it's, it's easy for you, isn't it? Yeah. But it's not to say that you don't know how to do it or you can't do it, but if he wants to do it, let him, let him feel like a, a bloke. Exactly. Or I'll end up with a wet dishcloth. <laughs> 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 and um, KM said, intelligent women are a hundred, 100 times more interesting than dull ones. I think some men who might might be on the controlling side don't like the intelligent ones, but a confident man will appreciate it. Mm -hmm. That's very true as well, isn't it? Yeah. And we've also got one more comment from um, someone that has not put their name. So men with equal education and those who have careers of a similar status to yours will not be scared by intelligence. Um, also men who have poor self-esteem and who are apologetic about their financial circumstances or who don't feel that they're very smart will f probably feel threatened by a smart, successful woman. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other thing though, like finances and who's like, got more money. Cause, you That's know, a, quite a hard one. That's another topic in itself. Yeah, isn't it, Chris? I mean, even though, for example, I always believe that if you're really serious about someone, you're married, for example, you're living together, I think finance should be shared anyway. I don't, that's true. I don't, I just find it strange when there's separate bank accounts and stuff. Cause, I don't know, because I've never, mm. I suppose I've always seen my parents, everything was together. And then when I, even actually, even before I got married to my boyfriend, we had separate accounts and then we had one joint one. Yeah. But then as soon as we got married, we just put everything together. So it didn't matter who was earning more mm. or less. That was never an issue with it's us. It's much easier that way, isn't it? It is. It's, it's a lot easier. And then, because before it was like, oh, you know, he was earning more than me. And it was like, sometimes I used to run out of money and then I <laughs> expect him to pay. So it was a little bit of, of sort of friction there yeah. with with finances but afterwards everything was together but what so. if someone spends more money in in the relationship would that do you think that would cause a problem if someone was going yeah out? of course if they don't because for example i mean i take care of all the finances in the mm. house so my husband doesn't deal with anything like that because he trusts me yeah but obviously if you're with someone that will just spend everything then you do have to have a tighter control and it's, it's more difficult yeah. i think that's a topic for another topic and a whole Getting show all these <laughs> we run out of time Oh, Chris. Yeah, we have to finish now. We need Thank more. you so much. We need more time. You're welcome. All guys. right, thanks for the lovely news. And it's Fridays, and it's so please do have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. If you want more information about the show or anything about what you've seen today, please do visit the website, chriscbshow.tv. And we'll see you again next time on Monday. Bye-bye for now. 
So I'm just about to go scuba diving and I'm going to pretend to be a fish. So join me there. <laughs> she whacked me in the head so I was like, she was coming up. Why? Why? I was trying to kill me, I told you. I was, I was trying to I was come up. After <laughs> you, not trying to kill me. I was trying to come up and the only thing I could find to hold on to was your hair. <laughs> right, so I can't get... <laughs> Sorry. Right, okay. <laughs> just, just, just <laughs> what, what did we just do? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Scuba diving. <laughs>